The United States, the forefront of Western civilization. The land of over 334 million people. It's also the land of many animal lovers from all walks of life. As a result of such a high concentration of animal lovers, up to 70% of American households is host to a pet of some sort. They may be cats, they may be birds, even things like ferrets and rabbits, many small rodents of many sorts. Whatever the diversity, dogs are inarguably the most popular pets around by far. As awesome as these animals are, not everyone is content with just keeping traditional pets, like a cat or a dog. Some people like to take their passion for animals into a more exotic direction. Reptiles are a relatively new addition to the array of pets that can be kept in the United States. With reptiles comes hundreds of species, an absolutely stunning diversity of animals to choose from. Some people choose lizards, anything from the tiniest geckos to huge iguanas and everything in between. Some choose turtles and tortoises, but some even take it a little further and get an animal a little more extreme. no animal that holds more fear and fascination at the same time than snakes. One of the most feared animals are snakes. Of all the pets one can choose from, snakes are clearly the most controversial. 
Contrary to what some misinformed people believe, most snakes are non-venomous and therefore completely harmless to people. As hated as they are by some people, there are those that love them and truly enjoy them. So here we are, about to explore what it's really like to keep one of the planet's most fascinating animals as pets. Are they really as bad as people make them out to be? What about the people that keep them? Are they really as weird and unusual as mainstream audiences would think? Or are they just ordinary people that see the truth through all the fear-mongering propaganda that would rather feed you lies than the truth? Let's find out. First, we must choose which snake we are to bring home. Even just among the snakes, there is a vast array to choose from. The options are endless. This is a blood python. This is a hognose snake. This is a Burmese python. This is a Honduran milk snake. This is an emerald tree boa. The options are endless, some of which are even deadly. This is a cobra. This is a vast selection of highly venomous snakes, gaboon vipers, various rattlesnakes, and cobras. So many options, it takes nearly five hours for us to come to our final decision. So we take our time with the process of elimination. Coming home with anything venomous is out of the question. The reticulated python being non-venomous seems like a reasonable choice. Calm and placid, small and peaceful, almost delicate to my touch. It seems like it would be the perfect pet. However, they are able to grow to eventually become one of the biggest snakes around. Same thing with the Burmese pythons and anacondas, also present at the expo. They may be small little babies now, but later on in their life, they just get too big. Not that this makes them bad pets or dangerous, but their large size may make their needs more difficult to meet. They are best left for people with a little more experience, as they are better prepared for the giants they will become. We ultimately come home with a boa constrictor. It's a baby, but for the most part, they stay at a reasonable size, seldom passing seven or eight feet. Upon its arrival home, she attempts to acclimate herself to her new home. With it having a daytime temperature of 85 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit and a humidity maintained at a high above 60%, something reminiscent of the tropical rainforests of South America, where her species is naturally from. Acclimation should be no problem for her. This is a process that would normally take a week or two for her to accomplish. Suddenly being brought into a new environment may be stressful for the snake and a very delicate time for her. So offering her food during this time is ill-advised. It would simply result in more stress and a long hunger strike that could last months. And in a boa this small and young, that would mean death for her.
Of course, the nature of feeding snakes may be one of the many reasons why snake keeping has such a controversial view. Although she may have been tiny, with time, we soon discover that her appetite wasn't. She may have only eaten once a week, but when she ate, it was like tomorrow didn't exist. When you hear that an animal is only fed once a week, you may wonder to yourself, why such a scarce feeding schedule? The answer is simply, being cold-blooded means it has a really slow metabolism. So slow that in some cases, digestion can take many weeks or even months. For this reason, they don't need to eat on a daily basis. In fact, it's simply not possible for them to eat that often. Feeding at once, we soon discover that it is a not-so-picky eater, even eating quail chicks as well. As it grows, so does the size of the prey items we feed it. It soon upgrades to rats. Feeding a living animal to another living animal is one of the many things that may make keeping snakes seem cruel or inhumane. But it's inevitable when keeping carnivorous pets. It's what has to happen for a time until you get it to learn to accept frozen thawed prey. Until then, it all comes down to either letting your pet starve or giving it what it needs in order to live. something. Snakes just happen to be carnivorous, and so it is fed what it needs. When you take a minute and pause, and just think for a second, you'll realize most pets people keep have predatory roots. Dogs, the most popular pets around, are derived from wolves, a high-ranking predator out in the wild, and it is because of this that they are used in hunting today. Not far behind dogs, you have cats, that tiny tiger that you keep in your house, and when astray, your neighborhood. Even the cute, adorable ferrets make for a feisty predator when given the chance. They too are carnivorous. Cats, ferrets, snakes. All are animals that have strong predatory instincts that all would most likely have eaten the same prey if given the chance. 
each one can be a rodent's worst nightmare. As she grows, so does her prey size. She soon upgrades from mice to rats. This one was a bit too large, and she had to take it into her water bowl. The lubrication that the water provides may be making it easier to swallow. The Great Outdoors The place where wild animals interact with other wild animals. No walls of glass to separate anything here. Surely bringing the small, delicate boa out here has lots of huge risks. However, it is now two years later and the boa has grown to an astonishing five feet long. She's not as fragile as she once was. A very huge leap from the tiny frail thing she was when we first got her. At her size now, she's no longer as vulnerable as she was when she was a newborn baby. In fact, with most of the fauna being birds and small rodents, she's bigger than most of the things out here. With the exception of the deer, of course. She'll never outsize a deer. There are a few species of snakes that do, but she isn't one of them. Being in the temperate climate of the United States, bringing tropical animals outside should be limited to the warmer parts of the year. This leaves us with the spring and the summer. Our autumns and winters are much too cold and harsh. Accompanying her on her journey outdoors for the first time is a ball python. He is another species of snake commonly kept as a pet. He too is tropical, but his species hails from West Africa. At four and a half feet long, he is about as big as they get. In fact, being nearly five feet is quite large for his species. While his growth will never completely stop, it is not likely he'll be getting much bigger. Unlike the boa, who despite being five feet, is still less than a quarter of the size of an adult her species. 
for at the moment she weighs only six pounds, much like the ball python. As an adult, she may weigh in at a whopping 15 or 20 pounds. They stay together for a short time, and then they eventually go their separate ways. The ball python has found his way to a body of water, a stream. With serpentine side-to-side -side winding motion, a movement typical of snakes, swimming comes easy to him. It's natural. Swimming is an innate ability in all snakes. You can take a snake from a desert that had never seen water before and drop it in a river, and it will know what to do. The boa constrictor is no exception, for she too has an innate ability to swim, but for today, she prefers to climb, and climbs whatever tree she can wrap her coils around. She finally picks one. Although she's not yet fully grown, she's still big enough to be a formidable foe to any squirrel or bird, and they steer clear of her. The squirrels are highly skilled climbers, capable of leaping and racing through the branches at high speeds to avoid danger. That's not so for the boa. Although she's a very skilled climber as well, lacking limbs, her methods of climbing are way slower. She has to constantly uncoil and recoil her way up the tree trunk very slowly and carefully. This motion is known as concerta locomotion, her body going through a pattern of coiling, stretching, and recoiling, something she does slowly, but with ease. Her entire body is strong and prehensile and provides her with excellent grip and strength. Squirrels have their claws, but claws can slip. Fortunately for them, their bodies act like parachutes, so even really high falls aren't fatal to them. The boa's body is a one five-foot-long prehensile limb of solid muscle, able to take hold with a solid grip at any point in her body, 
Even her tiny tail at the end of her body can hold on with some extraordinary strength. Climbing isn't as innate of an ability in snakes as swimming is. For not all snakes have the ability to climb. Some can't, and some can. And those that do, hold on with seven times the grip strength they actually need. Nothing is knocking her out of this tree. The only way she comes out of this tree is if she lets go herself. When it comes to muscle strength, there aren't many animals of comparable size that can outmuscle a boa or a python. They have some of the strongest muscles in the game. This is why despite all the strength it takes to hold herself in a tree, she can still remain there for hours on end. She can even fall asleep like this. Why is that? Well, it's simply because she doesn't need to use all of her muscles at the same time. That would be exhausting and very wasteful of her energy. Instead, she alternates between which muscle groups to use, using a different group at a different time to maintain her position. In this way, she preserves muscle power and prevents one group from getting too tired. All muscles get a separate turn to be used. She also uses this alternating muscle technique in other ways, an ability known as active stillness. It's how snakes like her can maintain such great muscle tones, despite her rather sedentary lifestyle and long periods of inactivity, tensing up alternating muscle groups while seemingly staying still to the view of the naked eye. In this way, she maintains her strength while also keeping her energy. And most importantly, she keeps a well-toned figure.
Large, heavy-bodied snakes like this boa are ambush predators. That is, they lie in wait for small animals to unwittingly get too close. And then she strikes at blinding speed once her prey gets within range. With this in mind, she needs to keep her muscles tense and ready for sudden bursts of action. She does so with active stillness. Out in the wild, she'd be as tense as a hair trigger. Always be ready for action, ready to strike in a split second. She could keep this up for days if need be, just waiting for something to make a fatal mistake and get too close. However, the boa constrictor has no need for that. She gets a free meal given to her every two weeks. For now, she moves and climbs for no other reason than curiosity and leisure. The small creatures of the forest are safe, for she is not hungry today. Even if she was, her hunting activities are more of a nocturnal thing. At her new size, her old enclosure simply would not do anymore. At five feet, she was due for an upgrade. Before she gets in here, we have to make it more reminiscent of the tropical jungle. Exotic animals such as her need a more natural feeling environment in order to get comfortable and feel at home. They don't have thousands of years of living alongside people like cats or dogs. In fact, the trend of keeping reptiles as pets in the United States only started in the 1940s, so less than 100 years ago. And even still, it would be 30 more years until reptile keepers ventured into keeping snakes as pets. Infantile, when compared to the many years and generations, dogs and cats and various other traditional pets have been under human care. This particular boa constrictor is an F7 generation into human care. That means that I'd only have to go back seven generations to find her last wild-caught ancestor. It may take five or more years for a boa constrictor to reach sexual maturity. Luckily, boas tend to have longer lifespans than traditional pets, up to 30 or 40 years. This means that her last wild-caught ancestor from seven generations back could still be alive somewhere. This also means that her species hasn't been under human care long enough to completely adapt to it. It is for this reason that she still prefers the jungle look for her enclosure and to have plenty of places to hide. Being kept under human care, she doesn't have any predators to hide from, but it still makes her feel more secure. It relieves her of stress.
To better ensure her comfort, she gets fed a small meal. After feeding, she will take a long nap, further inducing a feeling of security in her new home. Fast forward four more years, and here she is a seven foot long, 20 pound adult. At this point in her life, Rats no longer fill her belly as much as they used to. She's at the size now where anything about the size of a rabbit or a chicken is more suitable. By now, she is six years old, that whole time under the care of one keeper, who still remains fascinated by her, not because of lies spread by propaganda, but because of the truth of what the animal actually is. Predatory by nature, but peaceful, beautiful, and magnificent.
If you ask about her demeanor, he'll say calm and placid for the most part, even lazy, just the most docile, laid-back animal he's ever been around. Likelihood of being bitten? He was never bitten the whole time he had her. She never bit or displayed any willingness to bite anything that wasn't food. She never displayed a single sign of aggression, not even a hiss. Overall, what kind of pet did she turn out to be? He will tell you, once you get past maintaining temperature and humidity and a regular feeding schedule, she's simply the most laid-back, least demanding, and friendliest pet one could ask for. In fact, one could almost get quite bored at times, but for those with a fascination for the animals, the excitement never dies. Although she seems quite large, she isn't a true giant. That record goes to the snake right here. This is a Burmese python. The biggest of this species is 19 feet long and weighs in at a whopping 200 pounds. Out in the wild, it would eat animals as large as a deer. Even still, the biggest Burmese python is not the biggest snake, or even the longest. This is a reticulated python, the longest of all living snakes, the biggest attaining a record length of 25 feet long and weighing in at an amazing 357 pounds. Unlike most other snakes, the reticulated python is the only species to have ever been documented on multiple occasions of actually hunting and eating people. Next, we have the yellow anaconda. Although this is an anaconda, this is not the species known for its iconic size. That one is the green anaconda. This one is far smaller, rarely exceeding lengths of nine feet, only slightly longer than our boa constrictor. Green anacondas, on the other hand, are known for being some of the biggest snakes on earth. Although not longer than the reticulated python, 
these snakes get far heavier, regularly exceeding 300 pounds at the biggest. Next is the Amazon tree boa, which although can reach up to six feet long, its extremely thin, lightweight body makes it rather small compared to other snakes of the same length. This makes climbing trees so much easier, that not only does it climb trees, but it also lives in them, hence its name, the Amazon tree boa. There are up to 2,600 different species of snakes, each one a unique little beast different from all the others. Snakes are a mysterious, beautiful creature that captures the mind of many. When treated right, they can be a wonderful pet. They're just new and not yet fully accepted. It's surprising how fast a mature adult person can be reduced to adolescence first thing when they are brought around something they don't quite understand, as the negative perception they receive from the majority of society is nothing more than a made-up rumor, fear-mongering propaganda, much like high school gossip about the poor misunderstood kid. Hopefully, watching this beautiful animal grow up with the help of people helps shed some light on the truth of what a peaceful animal some snakes can actually be and what most actually are. <laughs>